can find a source for a politician saying that they don't want arts in education, yeah. then that would be really supported and make your argument really good. Yeah. But I feel like you, it would be better to say that politicians prioritize other things over education. Yeah, that's kind of how I started in the beginning, and then I started, I got a little more extreme. Yeah, yeah started and then the like near the end, I'm like, wow, like politicians <laughs> must hate the arts. I think going into it, you kind of get the idea that like, like, uh, they're not in my head, they don't know what I'm thinking, they don't know what I want to write, so their critique isn't going to be like beneficial to my paper. Um, I mean, that's kind of the way I thought about it going into it, but um, I think, I think it, it helps you just open, um, kind of like broaden your view on your topic and your perspective, and it helps you like reach more of an audience writing because you're not so narrow focused and you can address more people like that. Even though like everyone has a similar amount of experience, everyone's experience is different. Like one of one of the people in my group is like really, really good at creative writing and I'm really good at technical writing. So like if you had their expertise to like groom you and make it a little bit more interesting, you can have a very technical yet very engaging paper and it was really helpful to get um, more than one perspective I'd say just because you, like you said you can find your audience. Another advantage can be the fact that your peers are generally your audience as well. So when you're getting feedback directly from your target audience, basically, that can be good because things that made sense to you might not make sense to them. You can like put comment comments in there, like stuff that like a lot of people make mistakes for, and if you click on that, it'll tell you exactly like how to fix it and like what you did wrong. One way that helps is. If you're talking to someone, you're not going to sit point out problems with their paper, as in, say, Mario handed me his paper. I wouldn't be able, wouldn't point out as many because I wouldn't want to offend him. But if it's anonymous, it actually gives me the full range to do it perfectly. We've all been able to read our my reviewers um, in text citations and in text comments, and we all know what each other's papers are about. We kind of can talk about what our problems are because sometimes we have issues of focus or we have issues of well, I think that you should take this paragraph and put it here and that really helps you in the revising session because you don't catch those things yourself. <clears throat> During in-text in in uh, comments you are reading throughout the paper really really carefully and you get the opportunity to just uh, show which part of the essay a person would need to work on so we use like we could highlight this part of some part of the essay and say oh well, you need to work on this just add a short comment on why you think how uh, that person can improve their his or her essay it made it easy for them to all be in one place you know instead of like emailing them back and forth and um, I think the rubric structure with the zero through four was helpful as well and like the sticky notes obviously you can put something right where you need it to be and then they can you know zoom in on that section so. Peer review, it's like your own people are trying to help you instead of you trying to do it by yourself. And everyone is trying, like, no one's going to try to hurt your grade, they're just trying to help you. So. Uh, peer review would be valu very valuable because you get to you get full use of constructive criticism, which is uh, very helpful because you actually get to evaluate the, the feedback you get and you get to know like, well, this is going to be helpful, this is not going to be helpful, so you're going to apply this to your essay, while you're going to maybe ignore the others that might be, not be as good for your essay. In high school, like when teachers would tell you, oh, give your papers to your parents or your friends or another teacher to review it, like, I, I never did that. I, I, I was like, I don't want anybody to read my paper. I may have <laughs> like, been the only that. person who did that because, yeah. well, I mean, in art, like, when I'm in drawing class, we draw the same thing, and then we turn around our easels yeah. and talk about everyone else's. Yeah. So, I mean, it was easier for me to do it. Yeah, but. see, I, I never did that, so this was, like, such a good way for me to, like, like, have to do it and kind of get into it and then, like, benefit from it and see that, you know, it's something I probably should have done. Because it, it's just another review on my paper. It's another way to better my paper before the final draft. I'm going to get a better grade on it. Well, in the real world, whenever you're publishing papers, which most majors will do, if you're in medicine, if you're in politics, psychology, 
and sometimes even business, people will look at your papers. This is an inevitable fact. It's not just going to be one person sitting and looking at your paper. No, it's going to be a lot of people. A lot of them have to be reviewed by boards. Exactly. You know? So as in, if you don't like your peers looking at it, well, that's who's going to be looking at it when you're beyond. <laughs> so you should probably just get used to it now rather than face difficulties in the future from it. People or students need to understand that um, no one... Like in life, no one does things by himself. You know, a surgeon doesn't perform a surgery just by himself, or an engineer doesn't build anything just by himself. So, hey, so people have to get used to the fact that we must work together. And you know, peer review. You know, if you, if you don't like what he made, or you think that the change that he suggested is not beneficial, then you don't have to take it. You're not, you're not losing anything. So you, it's basically your judgment, but it's, it wouldn't hurt to take some feedback from someone else. During the course, I've improved a lot in providing evidence and like to make my essays more credible. And because people would normally say, "Okay, you're you're providing good, very strong statements, but you have to support it with some with some evidence from other people because maybe you're not like a very credible author since I'm only in first year of college." So I've become much better providing evidence to make my essay much more stronger than. Like for example, Andrew on my last paper. I didn't have like um, good structure in my sentences, and he gave me many ideas of how to change it, which helped my paper a lot. We had the Rogerian structure, and I was like completely lost. And all the people who like reviewed my paper, like put was like this paragraph needs to go here, and it's just like you gotta move stuff around. And that was really helpful because then I like flow was like my major problem with papers, so it really helped to you know, move things along. I think it's also an exercise in critical thinking because you do have to take a step back and like objectively look at all of these different criteria and that's an exercise that helps um, just better inform and voice your opinions. And like personally for me, um, like during like this, this semester I'm taking ethics, so I would like, we, we do peer review there too and I will take what I've learned here from peer review and put it into that. So well, when we have to do pro projects for engineering, we always have to do reports on what we do and everything that happens throughout the, the development of the project. So we have to be really clear on what we do so that there, there aren't any mistakes or misconceptions from the reader. So. Being a biomed major, there's, I mean, I know for me personally, like whenever you go to chem lab, you have um, a chem report or a lab report that you have you end up getting peer reviewed by your peers in your lab. Like, they look over it, they look at it. It's the same thing with English. Like, when you're writing a paper, you know how you write. So, when someone else reads it, they get a different perspective, which means they can look at the mistakes easier than you can. So, it ends up helping you in the long run. It may be something you don't want to do initially, but you're going to learn that it's something that's going to benefit you in the long run, something that you're going to like to have when you're writing your final draft. Because when I'm writing that intermediate draft and I come back and see my grade, you know, sometimes I may get like a B minus or even a C plus or something, and of course you're not going to be happy with that. But at the same time, I'm looking at it knowing, oh, well, this is my intermediate draft. I know I'm going to get better on my final draft. I know I have O'Neill's critique, Andrew's critique, Maria's critique, and even Dr. Williams on the intermediate draft to help me. Um, you know, make it that much better for the final. So I always know my final is going to be much better thanks to like you know my reviews and the peer reviews and everything. So it, it just always helps me like that. I got a lot of comments about my uh, my strong like my focus on my thesis. So what do you think? I think that I should put it. Should, can I put it both places? Can you put it? Both? Well, you're going to be developing that thesis throughout, right? Okay. So, um, but if your if your content of your first paragraph doesn't really reflect what the paper is about, then yes, you've got a problem, right? It's getting there. It's cool. <laughs> Which is why we do multiple drafts. Right. <laughs>